Hello friends, myself Prakash Kude, Assistant Professor in MLU Textile Engineering College. Today in this topic, we'll discuss about the warp protector mechanisms. And basically we'll first we cover the loose read warp protector mechanisms. So these mechanisms comes under your auxiliary motions of your loom. The auxiliary motions are important for improving your quality of fabric and improving your productivity of your loom. So under this, we have the warp protector motions, we have the warp stop motion, web stop motion and the temple break all these parameters comes under your auxiliary motion so we'll see what is the basic function or objective of your warp protector mechanisms the warp protector mechanisms is basically used when we need to stop your loom when shuttle has been trapped in between shade so during your shuttle tap has been has been occurred there could be chances of multiple warp breakages and there could be also chances that the shuttle and read wire damage can be occurs so what is the necessity of your warp protector mechanism in your loom? So during this picking, when shuttle may fails to reach to the other opposite shuttle box, so that could be due to the uh, faults in your picking mechanism or that could be your due to your defective shade formations. So under these situations, if slave fails to reach to the other shuttle box, so shuttle has been there in between your top and bottom layer of your warp and that will also cause the Wire, read, uh, read and wire points of read wires and shuttle wires can be damaged and that will cause the many warp break, end train breakages. So to avoid these effects, the warp protector mechanism has been provided on your loom. So there are two basic types of your warp protector mechanism. One is your loose read and second is your fast read warp protector mechanisms. So we'll discuss only for in, the, in this lecture about the loose read warp protector mechanisms. So the principle is that of this mechanism is that the reed is forced out of its support whenever the shuttle is trapped in the shade. So when shuttle has been trapped in between shade, the reed is loosely mounted on your in between your reed cap and reed case. So during that period, the when shuttle has been trapped, the backward movement of this reed has been taken place, and this will cause knocking of lever and other mechanisms to knock off your starting handle of your loom and stop the loom. So we'll see the construction of your loose read warp protector mechanisms. So in this, the read is mounted from the top with the read cap and from the bottom it with the read case and it is firmly held here. And at the back of this read case, there is a curved arms has been placed and which is connected with your stop rod. And this stop rod has three components has been connected with this stop rod. And the stop rod has been extended over the full width of your loom. And this stop rod has the three connections. One is there is anti friction bowl, connection to the anti friction bowl, one connection is to the spring which has been mounted here, and another is your dagger or duckbill. This is the dagger one, and E is the duckbill is there. J we call as a dagger. I is your spring systems and G is the anti friction bowl. These are the three components has been attached with your stop rod finger. So as and in front of this dagger, there is a corrugated plate or heater has been there. And in front of your duck bill, there is a frog arrangement is there. So you'll see how this mechanism is helping in the nor during the normal working. We need to keep this your read firm. So for that, there are three components has been used or three devices are required to keep this read firm. One is your duck wheel, another is your that anti friction bowl and third is your that spiral spring. So how this duck wheel, anti friction bowl and like that spring has been held in the, in the, in the keeping your read firm, we'll see. And what is the basic necessity of these three components during your normal working of your loom? So here we, we have discussed about this. One is your duck wheel and frog arrangement. E is your duck wheel and this is F is your frog arrangement. So when slave moves forward, during the slave forward movement, the duck wheel slides under the frog arrangement. And that will cause the locking of your reed. And that will improve your bit of to the weft. Because the duck wheel goes below the frog and Due to that, there will the firm firm uh, firming of your reed has been taken place. Reed will not be moved, and proper reed have has been happened. 
and the antifriction bowel and bow, bow spring is there. The antifriction bowel and bow spring is basically important when sleigh is moving backward. During the backward movement, there is a transfer of your shuttle from one shuttle box to the other shuttle box. So during that passage of your shuttle box, a shuttle from one side to the other side, reed should be firm because reed can passes like has the contact with your uh, shuttle. Shuttle has contact with your reed. So during that, there should have the smooth flight of your shuttle during that movement. The reed should be firm. So that has been done by your antifriction bowel and this is the bow spring gauge we had donated here. The next component is your spiral spring. The spiral spring is normally required to keep this reeds tension all the times. This is the normal patient tension we need to keep for the reed to be firm. So you'll see how this working of this loose reed mechanism has been taken place. When shuttle has been trapped in between this shed, so they, they will try to apply the pressure onto the reed. When sleigh is moving forward for the beta, so the when shuttle has been trapped in between this, so they will up exert the pressure on your reed. So due to that, there is a backward or that swinging movement of your reed has been taken place. So the reed will come out of your reed case. And due to that, there is a partial movement of your stop rod has been taken place through this curved arms. And due to this partial movement of this stop rod, has been turned the duck bill and dagger is also raised up the e and j that is the dagger and duck bill they will raise up so during this forward movement of your sleigh the duck bill rides rides over your respective frog and the dagger will hit this corrugated plate that is the k here is there corrugated plate or serrated plates or heater we can call it so that will ultimately hit this corrugated plate and that will stop the loom and the duck bill is riding over this frog, they will enable this reed case to be moved backward easily. So that is the basic fundamental of duck bill and frog arrangement during the when shuttle has been dropped in between your shade. So we'll see the working of your loose reed mechanisms here. <laughs> So in this video, we have seen that how the working of your loose reed protector war protector mechanism is there. So basically this loose reed war protector mechanism is basically intended for your light and medium weight fabrics is this is basically for your light and medium weight fabrics. And in this, the spiral spring is necessary. The necessary is necessity of the spiral spring is that it should be strong enough that it will prevent your reed case from vibrating during running of your loom because reed is loosely mounted in the reed case. So during your normal working, the reed, there will not be any vibrations. So for that control of your vibrations during that normal working, the spiral spring is much more important. And if it is too strong, the shuttle can exert the greater force to push this reed backward and which means more strain on the warp thread. So that will create the difficulty of if you are having the delicate yarn because this is the light and medium weight fabric we are producing on this loose reed warp protector mechanisms. So it will not stand this such strengths that will result in your warp breakages. So thank you so much for so much. Stay tuned to my next videos. We'll discuss about the fast read warp protector mechanisms. Stay tuned and subscribe to my channels.